Welcome to the official YouTube channel for the Colin Coward Podcast. Go on, hit the subscribe button. There you go, right down there. If you wanna be among the first to hear my weekly takes, NFL, college football, more, right there. LeBron James' son is an NBA athlete. I don't think right now, currently, he's quite an NBA player. I think they would draft him, send him to the G League, give him a year. And he, Mick Cronin said the other day, the UCLA coach, he's not as quick or as fast as he was pre-cardiac arrest. He's not quite the player. But I watched him, but I've watched him enough, seen his hops, seen his handles. He's got a beautiful jumper. He's got a beautiful looking right, jumper. I like his it, jumper. It, it better. looks good. His first shooting percentage is not good, but it doesn't look like there's a problem with it. I agree with you there. No. In fact, I like it better than his dad's. I think his shooting is very natural. Bigger players don't yet generally, you know, Larry Bird, sure. KD, the exception. A lot of times the 6'4 guy's got the perfect jumper, the perfect look, the perfect hand size. But here, here's the thing. And I don't know how necessarily to explain this. Is that this is the worst draft. Maybe as bad as the Anthony Bennett draft. So as more mothers are telling their kids, do not play football. More mothers. This is yeah, in definitely. Los Angeles. I have a buddy that lives in, in Brentwood. He's like, I'm like an outcast for letting my kids play tackle football. I was at a sidebar to it. I was at a a card game with some uh, Hollywood and finance folks. Low stakes for the, by, by it, their standards for sure, else I wouldn't have been able to play in it. And there was a very, very smart guy there who... Had enough money that he all, when I was like, how do I know this name? I didn't know who he was at the time, but I was like, I know this name. So after I left the card game, I Googled his name and I was like, oh, you almost bet. You almost bet. You almost bought this baseball team like six years ago. I won't say the, um, but he said that like he, and he was a very sharp guy and he was like, yeah, I don't think football should be legal under 18 years old and i didn't agree with him but my i'm just echoing your point that that there are a lot of people that are not letting their kids even consider playing tackle football particularly i think i bet it skews higher income and things like that but go ahead as you were saying about Bronny. yet you can get brock purdy in the final pick half the league is undrafted kurt warner tony romo undrafted the NBA is a global game, and people are suggesting there are not three surefire NBA starters in this no draft. Question. There's two rounds. There's almost no players after the 12th pick. It's a cheaper sport to play. Hockey and football are expensive. It's a global sport. Is that saying that the NBA is so good it's impossible to make it? Is it saying our domestic culture is broken and our players are distracted and not skilled enough? How in the world could you have a global sport? We don't have a shortage of great baseball players, great hockey players. We're having drafts. Well, like every third draft is terrible. Yeah, but I, so I think it's actually more the first than the second because I the league is more talented now than at any point in my lifetime. There and so True. I I think it is less that oh my god there's not good players it's that the bar for being considered a good player these days is so much higher than it once was and your pal bill simmons talks about this a lot but like the the guys who are now ninth men you know not that long ago would be good starters Good, like good. And if you look at some teams that we thought of as very good teams 20 years ago and look at who they had after their top four guys, it's a bunch of, huh? And so that it's an argument for expansion. It's an argument for adding teams to the league because the talent level right now is so high. Like you look at the Western Conference in the NBA right now, we have. As we record this, the Lakers and the Warriors are the nine and the ten seeds. It's insane. And keep in mind, so next year, so think about the Western Conference and the NBA next year, and then I want to circle back to Bronny for a moment. So Minnesota is not going to be worse. I mean, I don't know if they're going to be the one seed, but it's not like all of a sudden Minnesota is going to go away. I'm just going to go down the standings. Denver is here to stay. Oklahoma City is only getting better. The Clippers maybe take a step back, but if they bring everyone back, why would they not maintain about where they are? 
Dallas seems to have figured out the Luka Kyrie thing. They're you know, they're even they're playing, playing defense. defense. In Luka's a uh, top three player in the league, hands down. They're fine. Phoenix, uh, yeah, okay. So Phoenix could go backwards because of the age of their guys, but it's not like they're going to be a disaster. New Orleans is a young team. Sacramento is a young team. The Lakers, the Warriors, and then you have Memphis with Ja coming back. The Wimby is coming for everybody. And Houston was an exciting team. That's 13 teams. It's 15 teams in the conference. <laughs> so there's just the teams are so talented and so loaded. I think that's about the draft. I want to defend the Bronny thing for a minute if I could. Sure. So what if this is... Can, can everyone, even the biggest LeBron James critics, acknowledge the guy's all-time basketball IQ-wise. Can we at least acknowledge that? That the guy understands how the game is played and understands the yeah. NBA as well as anybody ever has. Okay. Yeah. For folks arguing, oh my gosh, LeBron's putting his finger on the scale. He shouldn't. Why would he do it? He's hurting his son in the long run. He's undercutting. I don't know that this is the math LeBron is doing, but it's just an idea. What if LeBron's thought process is on this current trajectory in today's college basketball climate, my kid is not going to get the development and improvement that he needs over the next three years to one day be an NBA player. Hmm. However, if I do put my finger on the scale and get a team to be at least somewhat invested in his development, then by the time I'm gone, he will be good enough to be a legitimate stand-on-his-own-two-feet NBA player. And so not that dissimilar from how Seth Curry went undrafted and then bounced around the G League for two years getting multiple chances, I happen to believe, in part because of who his brother is. And then through that development, now he's a legitimate, really good NBA player. Would that have happened if he didn't get those opportunities that I think he probably got because of who his brother was? No. Do I think that is fair? I don't know. Define fair. Is it absolutely what I think I would do if I were in LeBron's place and my kid, like, of course, if I can help my kid achieve his dream and he might not be able to, without my help, of course I'm going to. And, 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 uh, and, and, and folks whining about it, like people in the NBA sell second round picks for 2 million bucks. These are not like the hottest commodities. Like, Oh my God, you're going to waste a second round pick teams. Throw them in willy-nilly teams sell them and so yeah i mean i listen Bron. what's gonna hurt Bronny is he's 6-2 and i i the, yeah. i know Mannix and shams and other people have said he's an nba level defender it's just hard to be a great defender in this league at that size i'm not saying he can't be um but i don't i don't think lebron is doing is being unfair to anybody in this cir circumstance whatsoever I think my my example that makes me laugh the most is every time you're driving and you see a plumbing truck, it always says Johnson and Sons. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, this is, we can talk about it being problematic, but we've only had 46, 47 presidents in this country. One were father and son. The other, one were uncle and nephew. Like even up to presidential level of this country, there's nepotism. The NFL and NBA front offices and coaching staffs are rife with it. Those those last names all being the same are not a goddamn coincidence. It, it, it is right. because people, you know, the Kyle Shanahan, you know, being Mike Shanahan's son, and his part of history is Mike Lafleur with Matt Lafleur, and, and then I mean the the Brian Callahan. Wait, Bill Callahan has two sons that are NFL coaches. Like, we're used to it everywhere. And for some reason, people are not as comfortable with it in 
pro sports, but I it, we haven't because we haven't seen this, I guess, because nobody's ever in the NBA right. played long enough for this to be a a real possibility. 